Whether you've joined us live and in person or on Facebook, we're glad that you're with us this morning. Uh, today we uh, look forward to continuing our series on what it means um, to be uh, geared up for life. And uh, we're, we're kind of taking a look at the last section of the first section of the book of Ephesians this morning. And we'll be um, talking about that a little bit later on. And then we'll, we'll uh, be looking at the second section uh, for the rest of the summer. So we'll kind of update everybody on where that is. Um, but if you've uh, joined us this morning for the first time here, we invite you to um, let us know. If you join us for the first time online, uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, we're glad that uh, you're, um, if, if you're new, we're glad you've chosen to join us this morning and we look forward to sharing with you in worship. Uh, use this time to prepare your hearts for worship as we share in the time of the prelude. Uh, one of the, the blessings of um, having a a uh, large family that goes on vacation together and comes back on, on Saturday is that they're still together on Sunday. So Caleb is here this morning, uh, Caleb Westcott is here this morning to share uh, in our prelude. And so uh, we look forward to uh, this time to prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of your creation. Indeed, for the beauty of the earth and the glory of the skies and all the things that we see every day around us. We give you thanks for your love that fills us and holds us and keeps us close to you. We thank you for gift of family and friend and church family. But most of all, we give you thanks, O oh God, for the gift of your son, Jesus that you freely gave to show us your love and to offer us your gift of forgiveness and peace. And so we gather this morning to offer you praise and thanksgiving for all of your great gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 139. It is um, uh, 
praise to the Lord, the Almighty. We're going to use verses 1, 3, and 5, uh, standing as we sing together. other before you're seated this morning and then we'll uh, share some hymn favorites. So take a moment too also uh, to welcome the folks who are, if you have your phones out watch, watching on Facebook, you may want to uh, share um, a greeting with them as well this morning. And uh, for our first hymn favorite this morning, uh, we're going to uh, ask someone who has been away somewhere this summer on a, on a trip, away from home this summer. Um, if you've been away uh, and have a hymn favorite this morning, uh, shout it out. 364. 364 is Because He Lives. Uh, so let's use um, let's use the first and third verse, three sixty four.
certainly be great to be able to sing about a God who holds our future. Uh, when we don't know what tomorrow holds, we know that we can trust that, that God is with us. So uh, thank you, Carissa, for that one. Uh, so now we're going to turn to someone who um, has not been away yet this summer or is planning to, th um, yet planning to be away. 369. Don't have to go very far for that one, except I closed my hymnal. Uh, 369 is Blessed Assurance. Let's do um, everybody on the, on the first verse together, ladies on the refrain, and then everybody on the third verse together, and men on the refrain, okay? so good this morning. It's great to be able to share in those hymn favorites. Uh, that one is a, a good one because it reminds us of our, our Methodist her Wesleyan heritage uh, that uh, says that you know, with the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives, we have the assurance that we can know that we know that we know that we've been forgiven. And so uh, we can sing that song and tell that story wherever we go. And so thank you uh, for those this morning. Let me invite the children to join us for our brown bag time together. And if you're watching at home, uh, gather around. Good morning. So I can ask you guys this because I know that you were all um, in, in Ocean City. Did, anybody, did you get a chance to ride uh, your bike on the boardwalk at all? Or, um, yeah. Kind of, sort of. Did, did, were you up on the boardwalk when, when people were riding bikes in the morning? You kind of have to watch out for them because they, uh, they, they'll, they'll run you down if you're not careful. Um, I remember we used to, used to um, ride the bike, our bikes all the time. So I want you to think with me um, for a moment. Um, do any of you still use training wheels? Did you used to use training wheels on your bike? Okay, so what did they do? They, they kind of, Charlie, what? They, they get used to riding it, right? So, so you don't have to, because it's hard to get your balance at first, so the, the training wheels are kind of there and they kind of 
Like if you lean to the side too much, they'll, they'll catch the ground and then they keep you from falling over. Um, do, you remember, um, do you remember the first time that you began to ride without training wheels? So how did that, what, what happened? How did you kind of learn how to do that? Do you remember, Harry? Okay, you could ride down the hill. Um, any, anybody else remember how you learned? Your mom held the bike while you're riding, kind of like held onto the back. Like so, they they used to have a way back when I was your age. They had like there was actually a little I don't even know what they call it. They, I think they called it a sissy bar or something like that. But it was a little actually bar that went on the back of the seat and. And that was actually a handle. It was a good thing to hold on to. But anyway, they would hold onto the bike somehow, and your parents or an older older brother or sister would hold onto it and kind of run behind you, and and hold onto the bike too, just to help you get your balance. Um, and then if you if you think about that, and I I can remember um, even that long ago, um, my when I was doing that, when they let go, I didn't even know they let go because I was so so intent on trying to ride and keep my balance that I didn't even realize that they were no longer there. And it's like, wow, I did it. You know, it worked. So why we're talking about that this morning is that in the scripture this morning that we're going to read, um, Paul talks about that, that we're, um, as Christians, we're being rooted and grounded in love. And the way he says that is that it's not that we're, you know, that we are, and that it just, it's, we, we do it perfectly. But rather, it's the idea that we are kind of rooted and grounded in love, but we're being rooted and grounded in love as well. So it's still ongoing. It's not something that's happened in the past. When we know Jesus, it, it starts, but then it continues, and we get better at it, just like riding a bike. So um, what we're going to be talking about is how are we rooted and grounded in love? Well, we, what that means is that if we are, we're, we're growing in love, and we're um, getting better and better at showing God's love to people by helping them, by um, encouraging them, by uh, seeking their best interest, by reaching out to, to share with them whenever we can. But we don't do it perfectly from the very beginning. It's something that, that we don't do real well. And so just like riding a bike um, without training wheels, it's almost like as we, when we're young in our faith, God is kind of holding onto our bike. And he's holding on to us as we, as we practice our faith, as we, as we grow in our faith. But eventually, it's almost like that bike, when, when we get really good at sharing love with people, God kind of lets it go. And he doesn't let us go without his presence, but he lets us go then on our own because we, we've gotten to the point where we, we are comfortable and confident in how we share God's love with others. And so it's important for us to remember that, um, you know, our Christian faith is just like riding a bike. We have to practice it. We have to um, keep trying at it, and we get better and better as we go. And when we get to where God wants us to be in our growth, and we, we still grow, we still, still get better at it, but it's almost like they're cheering us on, clapping for us, and saying, hey, you got this. You're, you're good. Um, and sometimes we don't even realize that that we're sharing God's love because we're so in town on what we're doing, we don't think about it. It's just part of what we do. Just like, just like riding the bike, we don't realize our parents have let go of it or whoever lets go of it. So keep growing, um, keep practicing sharing God's love in whatever ways you can. Um, reaching out again, um, helping people in need, um, telling, reminding people that God loves them, and just living a life of faith. And um, God's with you and encouraging you, um, just as he is all of us as we grow in our faith together. Let's have a word of prayer together. Gracious God, we thank you that you sent Jesus to be your presence with us. We thank you that you gave him as an example for us on how we are to live as he showed your, your love to others. He healed, he helped, and then he gave his life for all of us. And so we ask that you would um, help us to continue to be rooted and grounded in your love. Help us to practice loving others, sharing our faith and, and being your people. And we thank you that you encourage us and you help us and, and then um, you, you help us to grow enough where sometimes we just don't even realize that we're doing your work, but we're, we're grateful for the opportunities that we have. 
And so help us to keep going in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks for listening this morning. Thanks for your help. Just a reminder um, of our offering uh, time. Again, um, we're grateful for all the ways that people have shared online and um, through dropping off gifts in the door and the way you leave the gifts uh, at the door um, this morning uh, or Sunday mornings at the church door. And so we'll in a moment offer a prayer of, of thanks for that. But before we do that, um, Kathy is going to come and share with us an update on our Vacation Bible School offering. You remember that um, last week Janice said when we did our closing that, um, we, that Kathy was away. And so, um, but she would be coming to update us and let us know how we did. So, uh, Kathy, we're glad to uh, have you back and glad uh, you're here to share this morning. Thank you. Um, it's nice to be back, but you'll notice I got somebody else to play the prelude and the special music. So, thank you, Caleb. <laughs> um, our theme for Bible school, as you heard last week, was the Knights of North Castle. Well, the lights are glary. And so Sir Hamelot over there helped collect our monetary donations. And um, I'm, this might be a little longer report than usual because I've got a lot to tell you. It was quite a week. We, we did our two projects again this year like we usually do and we collected along with the congregation for the hygiene kits that were put together um, that are, will be distributed by the nurses in Mantua Township elementary schools to the students that are in need of specific items. You saw last week the number uh, that was collected, quite a lot. And as I understand it, they were able to put together 50 or 51 complete kits um, and still have a lot of extra stuff left over. Um, I think uh, we need um, some brushes and combs some lotion, and we can put together even more kits. So there'll be still a chance through the summer to, to collect, to add to those kits. Um, and all of that, what you saw last week, was donated by you in the congregation, by the people that attended Bible school, and also by a lot of the retired teachers from the Mantua Township schools because we get together once a month and have lunch, and I told them all about this, so they brought a whole lot of things as well. Our second project is something we repeat every two years where we uh, collect money to send to Children with Hair Loss Agency um, to, that provides wigs for children who have lost their hair for whatever reason, lots of different reasons that this happens. They're provided free to the children and if n they need it, as they grow, they get a new one without charge until they reach 21. And this year we were able to collect 10 ponytails, thanks to Amy and her helper who cut hair on Wednesday night. And um, so they will be sent to the uh, nonprofit. And we've collected money every other year to help su subsidize making these wigs. In 2017, we raised $1,155. In 2019, we raised $1,144. To reach o over $1,000 in our uh, Bible school mission is quite an achievement, I think, and I was very happy those years. This year, I was a little hesitant to set a, a goal because we knew attendance might not be as large as usual, and I didn't want, I just wanted us to do the best we could. Uh, attendance was about a half uh, of what it normally is, and after two days, we had raised about $150. So I suggested maybe we could get to 500 by the end of the week. Boy, was I wrong. And I can't even say that without getting emotional. Because the next day, I was given a very large donation from someone who does not attend our church on a regular basis, but has attended Bible school since they were, they were a child. Uh, now they are an adult. And I was told that the donation was made because of what Bible school had meant to this person all along the years and how much they appreciated this year's particular projects that were meant for children. And just like a teacher 
You never know if you're really making an impact on children as you teach them day after day. The same is true as a Christian. You never know for sure if what you are teaching and what you are exa example is, is making an impact. Um, but that was different this week, this Bible school week, because I was able to see uh, the results of what Bible school has done through the years. Um, so as a result of that donation and the other donations through the week, we raised $1,546.50. And you know I always do a chart. Yeah. I always make a chart so the kids can see how the, the donations are growing. I had to add to the chart this year. I had to do a little flippy thing, and I'm not good at that stuff because we went past the, the length of the paper. This was amazing, and everyone was amazed that week. So I can't thank all of you enough for all of your support along the way and for the support of, of those who attended Bible school this year. And thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. And you know, it's you're you're going to hear during the message time um, another another example of um, how amazing it is what God does. When, when we trust in God and how God multiplies our work and when we don't necessarily think that, that things are going to go as, as they might. And so you'll, you'll hear about that too, but um, uh, that goes right along with what um, Kathy shared with the offering um, and expectations this year, again, not knowing what was going to happen, but uh, trusting, trusting in God and God does marvelous things. Let's uh, offer a word of prayer uh, for our offering and uh, then we'll be sharing again in a time of special music um, Caleb will be coming again to share uh, that with us. So let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all of the ways, again, in which you enrich our lives through your gifts. We thank you that we are able to share with others and enrich their lives, whether it's through, um, through the ministries of our church that are supported through the offerings or through special gifts uh, to, um, to our local schools or, and for children who are suffering with illnesses and, and loss of hair, whatever it is, there, there are ways in which we share your love, and we're so grateful for those opportunities. And so we ask that you again would bless all of our gifts, bless us as we continue to live lives of faithfulness, offering those gifts to others. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, Caleb Westcott is going to share, oh, sorry there, uh, our time of special music this morning.
as we share in our time of intercessory prayer, I'm going to check the, the book here, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to, um, there's a, a note of praise that um, Fred Patain's uh, birthday is the end of this week, um, and Fred is turning 90, and so his um, family have asked or requested that he's, he's not going to have a party, but uh, they'd like to surprise him with a gift of, of birthday cards, and so um, on the screen, we're going to have uh, Fred's, uh, it's actually not Fred's address, this is actually um, his uh, daughter-in-law's address that um, will be, uh, she'll be collecting the card. So if you know Fred and would, would like to send a card, um, please send it to that address. Uh, we'll leave that, there on the, leave that up there on the screen while we um, share our time of prayer so you can write that down. Um, there are pens in the pews. Hopefully you have a bulletin or something to write on or write on your hand or whatever. Um, the, um, also, uh, there are some extra cards that are already addressed and stamped on the, over, on the, the pew in the overflow section. And so if you are not going to be able to get to the store or um, would like to kind of do it easily, feel free to take one of those cards and all you have to do is sign it um, and uh, drop it in the mail. And we want to be able to, to share um, some love with Fred for his 90th birthday. Um, they, uh, in the email, that if you've got the email, um, some people, I, it, it came out from the church, um, uh, from the United Methodist Church of Mantua, so I'm, I'm assuming Becky did that. I got it while I was out on the mission um, trip work. So um, it says if you would like, um, if you have a memory of Fred or a story of Fred or some way um, and want to share that also in the card, feel feel free to do that as well. Um, and so this is a way that we can, um, again, encourage Fred. And um, they said they're not going to have a, a party for him, but it'd be a great way to make an old man happy. And Nancy? check that because uh, I want to make sure they get to the right place. <laughs> Do we hear 23? No, no, 22. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking for the, here it is. I'm hoping, so if you got that email, because that address came Oh, no, it is, okay, it is 22, okay, that was a, I wrote it quickly this morning, that's my fault, so, um, yeah, 22, dies court. Thank you, Nancy, for catching that. Um, so, we also, from our book here, uh, continued prayers for Agnes Flood, as she recuperates from her surgery at MD Anderson, they had added her um, last week to the list, but, uh, that is a uh, surgery has taken place, so we want to continue to uh, pray for her. Uh, um, the JUG class extends uh, birthday blessings to Vicki Sten. So, Vicki, happy birthday. I'm not sure what day it is, but um, today. Okay, great. So, happy birthday. Make sure you tell uh, Vicki happy birthday this morning if you see her on the way out. Um, and Judy and Joe Smith ask for um, uh, prayers for Russell and Dawn Clark. Uh, for a serious medical problem. And then uh, for uh, Joan Haggerty, uh, she has anemia and uh, rapid heartbeats. And so prayers for, is, it, um, is that, um, it looks like it was written, is it Joan or John, whoever? Jo Joan, okay. Joan Haggerty, um, I want to make sure we've got the right person. I thought that's who it was, but I want to double check. Um, uh, ammonia, ammonia um, pneumonia, and rapid heartbeats. So, okay. So we want to add uh, Joan Haggerty to the list. And then uh, also um, the altar flowers this morning um, are in honor of Wilma and Mark uh, Nagdigal's wedding anniversary on uh, July 22nd. And so we thank the Nagdigal family for, uh, for that. And um, also we received word that Tom Eaton uh, passed away yesterday. Um, he was in the uh, nursing facility um, in Williamstown, and so we want to remember the Eaton family. Doris? 
Okay, okay so a happy birthday to uh, Len, who turned 90. So uh, congratulations to Len and happy birthday uh, wishes as well. Those are the uh, prayer requests that we have, so we'll take a moment to um, thank God for gifts of joy and ask for God's presence for those who are in need of healing. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this opportunity that we have to gather once again, to come before you with, um, with the joys that we share. We're grateful for, um, again, the opportunity that we have to, to know the good times in life. So for birthdays and for anniversaries and, um, and for answers to prayer in our lives, we are grateful. We thank you for the way in which you care for us and share your love and, and healing. And so it is with assurance that we have seen your hand at work at different times in our lives that we can come and, and lift before you the needs that we have. And so this morning we offer once again our prayers for healing for folks who are recovering from surgeries, who are dealing with illnesses. We ask that you would continue to touch them and, and help them to find strength and assurance, help them to know healing through doctors and nurses. We pray too for the Eaton family and ask that you would be with them during a time of loss. Help them once again to, to be reassured that your spirit is a, a spirit that offers comfort and strength. And so we ask that you would help them to find, um, find hope even as they gather to remember and celebrate Tom's life. We ask that you would continue to be with each one of us as we continue to love and, and serve others. We ask that you would give us eyes and ears to see where we can be your presence in times of need. And so this morning we continue to pray for areas of our world that where we can't go, but yet we know your spirit is there and ask that you would be with places where there's suffering and struggle, where there's unrest and unease. We ask for peace and healing to come. We continue to pray too for, for our country and for those who are uh, struggling with, with uh, the, the pandemic and the virus that, that seems to be resurging. We just ask again that you would um, to just reassure all of us that, that we're never separated from your love. We ask that you would, again, be with the minister of ministries of our church as we uh, move through the rest of the summer and head towards fall when we hope to, to start once again with um, opportunities for gathering in small groups and in Sunday school and um, choirs and all the things that are part of our life together. And we thank you for your wisdom and your guidance. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One of the risks of One preparing of the a bulletin ahead of time, um, ahead of because time, of uh, being out of the office most of the week doing mission work, is that uh, we choose hymns that were chosen as part of the hymn favorites last week. And so our hymn of preparation, we sang, um, Kendall Munch actually chose it as, a, as one of our hymn favorites. Uh, but that's okay, because it's a great hymn. Uh, it's a reminder to us of, of God's love for us. So we're just going to use uh, the first verse. Um, you can remain seated for this, uh, unless you want to stand. Feel free to stand if you'd like, but uh, we're going to sing just the first verse and chorus of uh, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus Loves Me.
Our scripture reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. I kind of already hinted at the fact at the beginning of the service that this is the end of this first section of the book of Ephesians. It's a, uh, the first three chapters are really an explanation of, of a theological explanation of our faith and what it is that you know, our, our understanding should be of who we are in Christ and what God has done for us. Um, and so we're ending that section this morning, and then next week we'll be starting with the fourth chapter, which is really the beginning of, um, okay, this is, this is why we live the way we do, but then the fourth chapter says, and this is how we live. It's, this, it's a practical, this is kind of a, um, a, a guidebook on how we live the Christian faith. And um, because we believe all these things in Ephesians 1 through 3, um, this is the impact that it should have on our life. And so we'll be starting that next Sunday as well. But this is the end of this uh, first section, and I'll be reading these uh, verses from chapter 3. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Being a part of a community of people who have adopted children from overseas, we, in my family, our family, celebrate a day that most of you do not. Um, some of you may, uh, and some of you are aware of this, uh, but it's a day that some people call Gotcha Day, and other people call it Airplane Day. Um, because particularly Airplane Day for, for those who um, you know, adopt from overseas, the, the children arrive by airplane. And so birthdays we all celebrate, but Airplane Day is a special day, recognizes the day that a child arrives. And so for us, with Kristen, um, that day was actually, while her birthday is February 22nd, her Airplane Day, um, well, and there's some debate in our family about this because we, we argue um, about it because they say it's June 30th and I say it's July 1st. Um, the reason is it was supposed to be June 30th, but technically she didn't get off the airplane until about 12.02 or 12.03 on July 1st. So I say it's July 1st, but she gets two dates. She gets June 30th and July 1st, so I don't think she cares too much about who's right on that. But anyway, um, but it's, it's hard to forget the anticipation. I know I've shared this uh, in a message before, but it's, it's hard to forget the anticipation of driving to the airport and waiting for the child to be brought off the airplane um, by the, the woman or, or man who has escorted the child. Um, in South Korea, that's what they do. They escort them. We don't have to go to the country to, to uh, receive the child. Um, and so they arrive in our home, and then as time goes on, when it's, when it's allowed, we then uh, go through the adoption process and go to court uh, for the adoption. Now. There's an old line in some of the adoption decrees. I, I, I went back and I did not see it in ours, but in some states, there's a line in the adoption decrees that um, goes like this. It says, you know, it's a whereas, you know, how when they do those court decrees, it's whereas this and whereas. Um, so whereas, you know, Kristen um, Batinger has um, been, a, you know, surrendered for adoption, blah, 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 and, and whereas, whereas, whereas. Um, there's a line in some of them that say, whereas over time they learned to love him or her. And as I think about that line, I think, you know, seriously, that's not true. You don't learn to love someone. Because really an adopted child is no different than a birth child. When, when a child is born or when a child is adopted and joins a family, they're loved at that moment, even, even before they're born. I mean, you know, that child is loved. It's a part of the family, of being the family. And so, you know, for Kristen, when she arrived and came off that airplane with every hair sticking straight up on end and a stinky, well, you know what, filled diaper, um, we loved her. 
you, you didn't have to learn to love her. It was just a part of, it, it just happened. And where you do have to learn to learn um, to love and to not learn to love, but where you do have to learn, rather, is, and where you have to learn to grow is how to live with them. And that's true with any child that's born to a family. You love them automatically right away, but you have to learn how to live with them because it's an adjustment. And it's not just a child, it's, it's whether it's a spouse, when a spouse joins a family or when, when you're married, that's an adjustment. When um, any family member joins a family or there's a change in a family, it's an adjustment. And so we have to learn how to live into that change, how to learn, learn how to live into uh, whatever, that different, whatever that difference is, whether it's you know, an addition of a child, a spouse, a, someone moving in with us, or you know, whatever. Now, Paul starts this section of this, of this chapter, um, or, or rather the section that we read this morning, um, for this reason, he falls on his knees in prayer. Well, for what reason? Why is he, why is he praying? What, what is it that drives him to his knees? It's what he spends the first part of this letter talking about, and that's the immeasurable grace of God. You know, we've talked over the past several weeks about how in the first parts of this letter, um, you know, God's grace welcomes everyone. We've, we've talked about that. That's not just for some, but it's for everyone. And so it's important how we look at, at brothers and sisters um, in our family, our church family. And it's this immeasurable grace of God that welcomes everyone that, that drives, his, drives him to his knees in gratitude. He's so thankful for, for God's grace. He says, you know, it's, it's what it's all about. It's, it's grace. That's the key to our life together as Christians. We receive the ability to love as a gift of grace. That automatic opportunity to love happens when we accept Christ, at least in terms of our brothers and sisters in, in faith. I mean, we love our family members, but, but we also love when we become a part of God's family. It's what grace enables us to do and allows us to do. But just like with the additions to our family and the changes in our family, it takes time to learn how to live that love and how to, to be together and how to, to share that love and to grow in that love, that takes time. That's not an automatic thing. It takes work, it takes growing, it takes regressing and, and going backwards and then growing some more and moving forward. And so it's a process. It's a process that Paul says uh, of us being rooted and grounded in love. It has happened when, when we become a part of God's family, it happens. We, we have the ability to, to love. That's the gift of grace. And we do love, and we're rooted and grounded in it, but we continue to grow in that rooting and grounding. It's not done when it happens. It's something that we, we live in. It's a process. And Paul prays in this prayer that we'll know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. And so as we follow the example of Christ in our lives, as we live lives of love as, as Jesus did, we continue to grow, and it's a commitment for us to keep pushing, to keep going, and to be filled with the fullness of God. It's what you know, John Wesley called going on to perfection. It's that growth, that growing, becoming better and better at it, because until finally we can love perfectly. Again, you know, he argued with himself whether that actually happens in this lifetime or not, but he says you, if, if it doesn't happen, you can get close, you can, and, and it should be our goal to reach that. And so we keep practicing, we keep sharing, we keep growing, we keep loving. And as we're being rooted and grounded, our vision is limited, so we trust that God will work in us and will do far more than we could even do on our own. So it's, you know, God holding onto the bike, he's pushing us, he's allowing us to go and to grow, and we grow more than we could do if it was on, under our own power. All of the yous in this passage, by the way, are plural, and so it's something that we do together. We encourage each other, we grow together, we, we share together, we love together. That's what happened this week. I have to say, I was a little bit apprehensive, just like Kathy shared, I, I, I said, you know, it was a good, good lead in. I was a little bit apprehensive because when I looked at what we were going to be doing um, mission trip wise, I thought, you know, this is, this is great. We've got these projects and, and we're going to be able to reach out to um, the folks from Paulsboro and we're going to be able to do these things. And then life happens. Um, you know, people get called into work or things change and, and you know, situations change. And all of a sudden, I looked at you know, 
who we had, and I thought, oh, we're never going to get these done. Th th we can't possibly get this done in a week. So it's, we're just going to have to like kind of back up and, and rethink it and say, all right, we'll, we'll start these things, and, and then we'll, we'll continue them next week and, and get things done um, you know, whenever we get a chance to get them done. I should have known better. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures so you'll get a chance to see what we did together. Um, we have a, a slideshow, so um, I'll just kind of talk briefly about these. Um, we, as you know, we helped some, um, some of our church families as well as um, sharing in, in Paulsboro and then worked on the hygiene kits. And so um, we worked, um, this was a gazebo, and you can go to the next slide. This is a before and after picture that got painted, and you can keep, keep going, a, a flower a flower bed that uh, got kind of restored and repainted. Some furniture got painted, metal wrought iron furniture, and then uh, trees were, were trimmed. A uh, fence, th so this is, this is the one, you know, you kind of get so busy you forget to take pictures. We didn't do a before and after picture. This is the after picture, but you can see a fence was removed. The uh, fence is there on the ground, and so it opened up the yard. This is the, um, the Head Start uh, Nursery School building in, in Paulsboro. And this is the, that's an after picture. I think we, that's an in process picture. That's another in process picture. Th that one you can kind of see, oh, back up, what, that one you can kind of see the difference. The, the, um, the, the lighter color paint was what we were painting and it was that uh, kind of a, they were calling it purple. I don't know if it was purple, but it's kind of a grayish color. So it brightened it up, and then um, the blue was a much darker blue um, that was underneath. That's an after. We painted the doors as well. That's an after picture. We also, um, in Paulsboro, there were three houses that were in need of, that were being used for um, either transitional housing, or they weren't sure if they were going, to, what their plans were, but they may be either going to use them again as transitional housing or possibly sell them um, and use the, the, the money to start a new, a new program. But um, so that's some of the work. So the doors, and the, this is a, a duplex, and that's the back of the duplex, and both of those doors had been broken in um, so that uh, there were, th the frame was damaged, and so there are now new door frames uh, on those two doors. That was the, uh, the third property was a single house. And this was a, um, you can barely see through that window to the left is a, a kitchen. And there was a, um, an attempt to put in a new uh, a countertop, but then a board had been added that didn't need to be there. So the board was removed and it was painted. There, there was a leak in the ceiling um, of this room, the living room, so that that whole ceiling was sagging and, and uh, well, you can say, no longer is it sagging. So, and then uh, there was some tree trimming and some cleaning. And this is a, um, the next section there are kind of before and after pictures of some, a garden that was, was weeded. I think these are all the befores. I think these are the afters. And uh, while all that was going on and we were out, there was a group here at the church putting together the hygiene kits that you heard talked about. And those are the fifth, they kind of lost count whether it was 50 or 51, but um, somewhere around 50 hygiene kits that were completed and the boxes of uh, extra items that will either be used to compile more kits if we add to it or will be shared with the schools um, in, in the boxes so that they can be distributed as needed. And all of that happened um, thanks to uh, a number of, of faithful folks who um, kind of dealt with busy schedules and, and, and heat and humidity and um, finding time and, and we did all that and we did it, we were finished by Thursday evening. So it didn't even take the full week. And so at the end of the week, I was saying, you know, how does that happen? How did, 
how did we get all that done with you know, changes in, in schedules and, and commitments and all those kinds of things that happened? How did it work? Well, it's because God did far more than I could ever imagine happening. That's what happens when we're rooted and grounded in love and work together. And so as we continue to do that in our lives, as we continue to find ways to share God's love, as we continue to find ways to reach out and, and be God's people together, we can continue to grow and join Paul in his doxology. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your rooting us and grounding us in love. We thank you that when we know Jesus, you fill us and you change us so that we become yours. And so we ask that as we continue to live our lives and move forward, that you would help us to grow and to be aware of all the ways in which you work in us and through us. And we thank you that together we can be the body of Christ, that we can be who you've called us to be and do so much more than we could ever imagine. We're grateful that we are part of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So before our closing hymn, our announcements this morning, um, again, our limited announcements this morning, but read your bulletin. Uh, there are still some announcements in there. And then uh, just a reminder that next Sunday is communion. And so if you're watching at home, you'll want to have your communion elements ready. If you're here, uh, we will have them uh, for you. And um, the communion offering next week uh, goes to do the work of the Alice Buck uh, Memorial Scholarship that we just celebrated um, at the end of June and presented some scholarships. Um, the communion offering for August will be used to kind of supplement that uh, for next year's uh, scholarships as we look forward to being able to share um, with our graduates uh, next year. Our closing hymn this morning is um, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. It's number 384. I will invite you to stand as we sing together.
as you go, go and know that God is with you and fills you so that you can do far more abundantly than anything you could ever think or imagine. That's a great gift that God gives us, the assurance of, of his presence with us that helps us to do that. And we give God the glory. So go with the assurance that you serve God and share his love with others and know that Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will be with you and keep you now and always. Amen. Amen.